Le'Veon Bell is missing voluntary workouts, but should the Jets be worried? J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Got a haircut, so I'm going to ditch the hat for today. I think Becca would kill me if I wore the hat. <laughs> um, all right, so Le'Veon Bell is missing voluntary workouts. How bad is this for the Jets? A lot of people are going to use this saying, see, the Jets shouldn't have paid him all this money because he's missing voluntary workouts, he's a terrible leader, all this stuff. And I do kind of understand that line of thinking because when I was doing sports in high school, they used to have captain's practices, and they were voluntary, but more more than less, you pretty much had to be there. It was like, you know, if you weren't there, it was, you know, a knock against you. Some people will point out that he held out in 2017, sat out all of training camp, rejoined the team in early September. During the beginning of that season, he had about 60 yards rushing and 19 yards receiving in the first three games on average. Um, but D'Angelo Williams came out to Le'Veon Bell's defense and said Todd Haley implemented a punishment package to the team where, you know, Bell would get unfavorable, you know, packages, I guess, that wouldn't necessarily utilize him right as sort of a punishment for not doing the, you know, what Haley wanted him to. Now, Bell's touches didn't necessarily change throughout the, um, you know, from the first three games to the rest of that season, but the way he was utilized definitely seemed like it was off. What does Adam Gase think about all this? Well, he said it's voluntary workouts, and Bell knows how to get his body ready. We've seen it in the past. And Gase also points out that Bell was present for the first week of voluntary workouts and has the playbook. So he knows what the offense is working on at this time. So it's not even just about the knowledge of the playbook, but also, I mean, Gase has a rookie orientation instead of a rookie camp as a way to try and minimize the injuries that could happen to their team. And when you watch the NFL, you know the best teams at the end of the year are generally the healthiest teams also. So if you're preventing injury early on, you're saving guys from those ACLs, those Achilles injuries, things like that. You know, obviously it could happen at any time, but having, you know, less time for that to happen is also a positive as well. And Bell seems to echo this sort of sentiment. He knows how to get his body ready. He knows what his body can handle. And having, you know, the ability to train the way he knows works and knowing that he's going to be healthy going into the season is also a big positive. I think he's still going to be there for, you know, mini camp and all these different mandatory type, uh, you know, training things. The only reason he held out with the Steelers is because he was on the franchise tag and he wanted some, you know, reassurance. Now that he has that reassurance, I think he will be present. And honestly, as a Jet fan, as long as he's healthy and ready to ball at the beginning of the season, I don't really care what he does. If that means eating Twinkies and like watching soap operas or something ridiculous like that, you know, I'd be all for it. So Le'Veon Bell will be fine. He's working out like a dog. He's absolutely ripped. And I think we will be absolutely fine going into the season. And right as I'm about to start editing this video, Mike McCagden has been fired as GM of the New York Jets. All right. <laughs> so it's still fresh. I don't really know um, all the details. But if I had to guess, I think this makes a lot of sense for the Jets. We've seen Max track record over the last few drafts of not really being able to hit on those mid to late round picks. He's been relatively good in the first round outside of like Darren Lee. Um as far as getting talent, but you know, you have to be able to make a good team with depth and with those later round picks. And we heard that there was a rift between Adam Gase and Mike McCagnon uh, throughout the draft process. So I think this, you know, sort of makes sense and holds, you know, a little bit of truth in those reports. Um, now, why did the Jets wait till now to do this? Is this unorganized? Is do the Jets not have any idea what they're doing? I don't necessarily think that's true. I think they may have known they were going to get rid of Mike McCagnon for a while. And honestly, his scouts did all the work leading up to this draft anyway. So if you were to fire him after the season and try to bring in a new GM to try and replace all those scouts, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So letting McCagnon hold on to his job and you know use the scouts that he had in place, I think if he knew he was probably getting fired, then you could worry about things being sabotaged and that whole sort of you know, maybe he doesn't look as good or uh, the Jets look a little more chaotic. But I think Mac probably thought he was staying this season. He probably thought that Sam Darnold saved his job. Um, but I think having these, you know, making this move at this time makes a lot of sense from a team building standpoint. Um, I don't know who we're really going to look at for that GM role. I don't think Adam Gase wants to do it. He sort of said in the past he did, that's not what he's really looking for. Um, but who knows, maybe, you know, McCarthy or someone else steps in and, you know, maybe they're some type of 
GM role. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it develops over the next you know few days, few weeks. See how it you know unfolds in front of us. I don't know what's going on. I <laughs> I didn't do too much too much research outside of like the initial reaction. So let me know what you guys think down below of McCagnan getting fired and Le'Veon Bell not showing up to practice. And as always, go Jets.